Welcome to our webinar. This is Philip Levinson, VP and Head of Marketing at EdCast. We're excited to welcome everyone. I'm going to introduce our guests here in a second. First, want to make sure you're in the right place. This is our webinar, Digitizing HR and IT Workflows to Unlock Employee Productivity, featuring ServiceNow and EdCast. We're excited to have everyone for this uh, discussion. And with that, We'll push things along. Again, I'll introduce our guests in a second. Uh, this discussion will focus on the future of work, two areas that both, uh, an area that ServiceNow and EdCast uh, take very seriously and have spent a lot of time focusing on. And we are delighted to welcome, and I will introduce him quickly now, and we will transition over to him in two minutes. Uh, the Vice President General Manager of the HR Product Line for ServiceNow, Deepak Bharadwaj. Deepak, are you there? Hey, Phil. I'm here. Can you hear me? Absolutely. And also, I have with me to my right the CTO of EdCast, Michael Kite. Hello, Phil. Great. It's great to have you both, and I'm excited to join you for this webinar. You can see we will be talking about the future of work. First up, for an agenda, we will start with ServiceNow and Deepak will walk through some key slides and discussion points related to the future of work and digitizing workflows. And with that, let me transition to him now. Uh, Deepak is not only heads up the HR product line for ServiceNow, but is very thoughtful about some of the issues involving the future of work, automation, workflows, and digitization. And with that, let me hand things over to you, Deepak. Hey, Phil. Thanks very much. Uh, and good morning, good afternoon to all of our webinar attendees. Really appreciate um, you taking the time and uh, gathering here to listen to, uh, to us. And also really appreciate the partnership that uh, we as ServiceNow has had with uh, the EdCast team. And so thanks to them for having me as a guest on this webinar. Uh, just a quick uh, blurb about uh, myself. I head the HR product line here at ServiceNow, and as we get through some of this content, you know, one of the things that will start popping out is really this whole transformation around uh, the employee experience. What does that mean, uh, and what value does that really drive? And for those of you who don't know about ServiceNow, uh, you know, we, we're uh, a large uh, SaaS enterprise software company. Uh, we were recently. Uh, called the most uh, one of the most innovative companies by Forbes magazine with our founder Fred Luddy on the cover uh, not so long ago and really our, our mission is to make the world of work work better for you and we have a platform that does that we'll uh, dive into that uh, a little bit as we get through this content so if you want to go to the next slide great and so today what we want to really talk about is how can we help uh, our customers really deliver that next generation employee experience. So you as employee experience practitioners, uh, as HR leaders, how should you start thinking about these next generation employee experience, whether you're in HR, in IT, in really any department within your organization, and ultimately unlock uh, enterprise-wide productivity. Um, and, and this is an important piece uh, that, that we'll keep coming back to because that productivity unleashes a, a huge impact on the business. And if you think about what that really does, we'll go to the next slide. It, it truly becomes an, a, a competitive advantage. So when you look at business metrics around employee satisfaction, so uh, you know, being, being listed as uh, most innovative companies if you're investing in employee experience. Uh, organizations that are investing in employee experience are more often found in customer satisfaction indexes, right? So this whole notion that employee experience is truly helping drive better experiences for your end customers. Oops. Go back one more. Yep. Uh, and then last but not the least, you know, as we as we get through this, you'll also notice if you want to click a couple more times, Michael, uh, really starting to drive the the financial. Uh, aspects of uh, of the business. So, you know, how do you drive higher profit per employee, higher revenue per employee? Um, so, specifically, it didn't show up on that slide there, but I'll, I'll just read it out. Organizations that invest in uh, employee experience 
uh, are driving four times higher profit per employee and 2.8 times higher revenue per employee, right? So you look at financial metrics that that productivity really starts to drive. You look at operational metrics like customer satisfaction. You look at business metrics around employment brand, whether it's a it's an innovative company, it's the best place to work. Um, and this is really the crux of how employee experience starts to become a competitive advantage. And you've had a, a number of folks in the industry, Josh Person has written about this, Jacob uh, Morgan has written about this. So there's just a lot of literature and research that I'd encourage you to go out and, and look at that ties investments in employee experience, specifically digital employee experiences to uh, uh, productivity and ultimately driving that competitive advantage. So how do we tackle this uh, employee experience problem? Um, and this is kind of our perspective at ServiceNow. Uh, we start this, um, uh, this process by really looking at what we call the employee journey and focusing on, uh, typically these are moments that matter. And if you look at this uh, employee journey, it's got things that may be HR related. Some of these things are IT related. Some of them may have to do with finance. Uh, the travel department, these are things that happen um, with, uh, you know, they may not happen every day, but they, they do happen in every employee's journey all the way from onboarding to the time this person leaves an organization and becomes an alumni. And one would argue that uh, while none of these are, are the same, right, so laptop upgrade is very different from a payroll issue, very different from new child, um, you could make the argument that each one of these is a moment that matters. At that point in time, if I have a payroll issue and my deductions are, are not right, I'm irritated, I'm angry. Um, if I'm gonna have a new child, I'm gonna adopt a new child, um, you know, I am going through just so much stress that I need help, I need guidance. A laptop is broken uh, or I need an upgrade, that's a cause of frustration as well. So these moments that matter, can very easily turn into moments of friction, confusion, helplessness, and that's really what we are trying to eliminate from uh, each of these um, processes as the employee goes through the employee journey. And this is not really about one department, it's not about HR, it's not about IT or finance. This is truly about what does this mean for the employee and how can the organization, especially the departments in their organization that are providing service to these employees, help them, guide them, and make sure they, have, uh, um, they, they, they are able to make these employees, get them back to productivity as quickly as possible. So as we look at these moments that matter, you know, some of them are simple ones, and um, you know, we've got uh, um, fairly well-defined processes for uh, for them. So, for example, if you have a payroll issue, you may contact your HR help desk, your HR shared services center, and uh, they may be able to fix um, that issue that that you might have as an employee. But really what I want to focus on today is what we call multi-departmental processes, and this is where it gets much more challenging. Um, and, and these are the, the, one would argue, the higher value added moments that matter. So think about new hire onboarding as an example. Um, you know, two days into the, two weeks into the job, if this new hire is still wondering about why their direct deposit hasn't been set up, uh, trying to figure out why they are seated, somewhere far away from the, the rest of their team, and if you want to click a couple of times, Michael, um, why, why they don't have access to the right systems, right? So this person is a sales rep, doesn't have access to a CRM system, uh, and they probably don't even know what else they're missing, and they are confused because there's just a number of different departments, people, number of different processes, and everyone is really operating in their, in their silos. So this is a classic example of how that confusion, that friction, that frustration leads to loss of productivity. And, and the problem here is that this coordination is very challenging. And if you think about all the types of positions that you have within your organization and the locations they're in and the different types of jobs that they're actually trying to get done, um, you end up with way too many workflow permutations and combinations that are required to get this employee set up and productive as quickly as possible. And all of those workflows are based on 
the job, for example, if this person is remote or in the office, it may be based on what the manager wants uh, this person to have. So uh, maybe the manager wants this person to have an international cell phone plan. Uh, the employee may have preferences. They may have a. They may want a Mac versus a PC. And all of this starts to lead to many different uh, combinations, permutations of these workflows. And then you have a visibility problem, um, which is because of lack of visibility into the timing of these activities. So, as a simple example, how would uh, the IT department know that they need to go and set up somebody's equipment in their office when they don't know if, where, whether the facilities team has actually set up their desk and set up their office? So that's, that visibility starts to lead to just more friction uh, and challenges. And last but not the least, there's no way that uh, the organization can focus on where the ball is getting dropped, why and how they can continue to make improvements to the process. And so if you put a dollar number to this, um, we looked at the, the BLS Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, studies and they estimate that on average, each employee in, uh, in an average organization produces about $500 of revenue um, on, on every day. And uh, if you look at the average cost per employee, it's about $200 a day. And so every day that an employee is really not productive adds up to about $700 uh, between the 500 and the 200, right? And so, so you think about it as, you hired someone, this person is not really producing revenue, and you're paying them for not producing revenue. And that impact can be um, fairly large as organizations get bigger or are in growth mode, uh, or just having you know, the normal turnover that one might experience in a year, which averages about 20%. And so really at ServiceNow, what we are trying to do is uh, help solve that problem. Go to the next slide and help create a great employee experience on one multi-departmental platform and drive that digital transformation of the, the employee experience. Um, what that lets us do is unlock that um, productivity that is uh, trapped because this employee doesn't have the tools and technologies that they need in order to be effective at their job. Into all those problems that I just spoke about, uh, we've got a, a solution uh, that helps solve, solve that very elegantly. It lets you rapidly build, test, deploy, enhance these experiences. It gives uh, everyone visibility, whether it's the departments, whether it's the new hire, whether it's the manager, coworkers, uh, and last but not least, with powerful analytics, predictive analytics that uh, incorporate machine learning and AI, we're also able to identify areas for, uh, for process improvements. In, in going back to the value that I just spoke about, uh, if we can reduce, let's say, two days out of a, a process, so maybe your uh, average onboarding process is eight days long to get this person everything that they need in terms of their laptop, their cell phone, accounts that they need access to, whether it's a sales, a sales system, a, uh, uh, an analytics system, uh, you know, box, you've got Slack, uh, your mail, and so on and so forth. Um, if we can make that whole process very effective, very efficient, and get this person productive sooner and save, let's say, two days for argument's sake, and let's say you're a 10,000-person company uh, with 20% turnover, you've got uh, 2,000 people that you're hiring every year, and add another 500 um, that, that you're adding each year just from a growth standpoint. So 2,500 new hires per year, two days of productivity, $700, day, $700 per person per day, that ends up driving a value of three and a half million dollars a year just by saving two days for new hire. So think about that and think about the value that you can help drive within uh, your respective organizations uh, just by creating these processes that are highly personalized and are able to provide that visibility, give you analytics, and get these employees, the new hires, as productive as possible. And all of that ultimately drives engagement, it drives loyalty, and it drives your employment brand. Let's move to the next slide. So just for, uh, um, just, just to keep this interesting, I, I, I found this slide, uh, and this came from one of our surveys that we did. So ServiceNow does a state of work survey every year. This is a little old, it's from 2017, but I think these results are still fairly relevant. Uh, what jumped out to me on this one was when you look at all these processes um, and rank them from best to worst, 
there's a number of processes that tend to be fairly siloed. They tend to be within IT, and IT is great at optimizing how they can fulfill individual requests, right? So you order a laptop, you you know you want an upgrade, something is broken, those processes are fixed. But as soon as it becomes much more complicated and starts to get into multiple organizations, multiple departments, sometimes these uh, organizations may not even be within uh, your company. They may be an outsourced service provider. Um, the experience just gets worse and worse. And so, interestingly, uh, what I found fascinating is onboarding is not the, the worst process. Uh, there are processes that employees think are uh, a worse experience than onboarding. And so, uh, parental leave is uh, at the bottom of that list or near the bottom, and employee relocations uh, is another one that has tremendous opportunity for, uh, for improvement. And so, really, this shows that uh, while onboarding is a great place to start, there are just so many other processes that cut across multiple departments and, and have to deal with multiple systems that you want to make sure that the employees have a great experience, uh, it doesn't impact their productivity, it keeps them out of this frustration, helplessness, confusion state that they might otherwise be in, and get them back to work uh, as quickly and efficiently as possible. Okay, now let's move to the next slide. So, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, you know, you'll obviously see a, a little bit of demo here from, uh, from Michael, um, but we've been working with the EdCast team on figuring out how we can bring these two solutions together. And if you think about EdCast as a knowledge cloud, a lot of help, guidance that is required for these employees during moments that matter uh, are very knowledge-centric. Uh, information centric and so uh, one of the things that we've been exploring with them is how do we bring uh, the the content that resides within their cloud and surface it within our technology our platform at service now so that customers or and their employees can get what they need in one single place so as an example uh, here's an example of a portal here's someone that just got promoted and they are uh, relocating in order to take a new job as part of that promotion and so um, we've got things that uh, that talk about policies and and training uh, that um, uh, that this employee can can go through but then at the same time you also see that there is content that we've integrated from the edcast knowledge cloud that brings in that additional um, um, set of capabilities, the additional set of um, guidance that this employee needs during these key moments that matter. So we're excited about what this uh, synergy can bring to our customers and their employees, and uh, would really love to see, uh, you know, hear feedback and, and see how we can continue to improve the integration that we have. All right. So last slide, I'll uh, I'll leave you with uh, with this. Um, yeah, how how should you think about transforming the digital employee experience? And the best way I can think about this is uh, is really using an analogy, right? And so if you think about um, the map, you know, not so long ago, you'd be driving, you needed directions to some place, and you would use a paper map. And then the internet came along, and it really automated that process, and it gave you the ability to easily figure out directions to get from point A to point B. But now we are in this era of smartphones and apps and something truly transformative has taken place. And so now it's no longer about just automating that process of figuring out the shortest path, right? It's really about you, the end user, and your personal experience. And so this app can now predict where you want to go. It knows how long it will take. It recommends detours. If there's traffic, tells you about nearby gas stations and coffee shops. And so now this experience is just so personalized. It's predictive. It's easy. And it's used not just when you're new to a place and don't know how to get somewhere, but it's now used for every driving, biking, walking trip that you might take. And so this is the result of applying design thinking to the experience of your travel journey. And the question really for all of us is, what if there were a Google Maps for the employee journey? Just think about that. And think about how you shouldn't just be stopping at automating manual processes and addressing these individual inquiries that employees might have. But think about how you can build on that service delivery foundation further, put the employee at the center of the, the experience design, and make everything personalized, predictive, easy during all of these moments that matter. 
So I'll pause there and uh, I'll hand it back to you, Phil and Michael, and um, let you uh, show us uh, a great demo of how these two solutions come together. Thank you, Deepak. That was great. Uh, in fact, uh, when you talk about moments that matter, that resonates with us here at EdCast. That is a major area of focus for us in dealing with these inflection points in the life of an employee and in a company. And clearly, when a new employee is starting and being onboarded, that is uh, absolutely an inflection point. So thank you very much. Uh, Michael and I would like to build and add to what uh, Deepak just walked through. Uh, Deepak, you did an amazing job of outlining some challenges with multi-departmental processes. And in certain uh, times that an employee goes from being hired to being fully productive, uh, one of the things at EdCast that you mentioned that uh, really ties in with our philosophy is the notion of productivity. And as we look at the steps that you took an employee through uh, Deepak with ServiceNow, uh, we can take an example, say Julie, who is hired by a Fortune 500 company, a company that's a customer of ServiceNow, a company that's also a customer of EdCast, Clearly, to get them up to productivity, you talked about how it's $700 a day for every day that she is not productive. At EdCast, we like to think of that as the starting point. Once she is productive, she still needs to be uh, fully onboarded, which you've explained. She also needs to be trained. She needs to learn both Base, based on her job function and her job responsibility within the organization. She needs to be upskilled in order to keep up. So if Julie, let's say, is in the data science department for her company, immediately, even after she's onboarded and she deals with those multi-departmental processes and challenges that she has to becoming productive, she still has other challenges to being to maximizing her productivity. So for example, on the left-hand side, you can see the fragmentation of information, content, and insights that she is able to draw from. So if she's in the data science department, she joins a Fortune 500 company with over 50,000 employees. There's a number of experts internally that she can learn from, both in her area as well as related to her area. So there's experts internally that she wants to uh, sync up with. How does she do that? Not all of them are in her office. There's thousands of employees. Number two, there's internal content. Uh, this company is a, has a wealth of content in Box or SharePoint or Yammer or Google Drive that she wants to try to leverage, but how does she do that? Uh, number three, there's premium content. So there's content from Get Abstract or Linda or HBR or LexisNexis. Uh, we work with companies that have over 100 paid subscriptions to different journals uh, in their uh, vertical area. So how does she leverage that as she's trying to get up to speed? Uh, there's also free and open content, and we know how much of, their, uh, of that there is, uh, whether it's TED Talks or YouTube or Wall Street Journal or many, many, many others. And finally, there's the formal learning, or LMS, company that they've been working with, whether it's Cornerstone or Saba or others. So Julie has a big challenge, and this challenge is basically this fragmentation that leads to a loss of productivity because time is money. And you've done a great job, Deepak, of outlining just how costly every hour and every day is. So what if Julie can use an AI-driven and machine learning powered solution and platform to get relevant insights that are directly targeted to what she needs, well, that would not only boost productivity, but also boost security because we can tie everything in with a very secure platform. So that's what we at EdCast have done with our Knowledge Cloud. And with our Knowledge Cloud, it's all about providing a unified, relevant, and engaging experience for knowledge workers that are customers of EdCast as well as ServiceNet. Now, how does Julie access that? Well, first, we know we, our goal is to make sure it's, that this content is aggregated, 
created, curated, and targeted for the specific purpose of meeting the goal that Deepak outlined, which is how to do this in the most productive and time efficient way possible. In addition, there's a relevancy goal because the more relevant and the more we use AI to bring very targeted insights to Julie on a timely basis, the more productive and the more value added she will be faster. But on the right hand side, you can see that there's a number of ways she can get these insights. So first she can use EdCast's uh, web-based uh, or mobile app and everything we do is mobile first here at EdCast. We have some companies that have over 25% of their workforce are millennials and that is driving a push for mobile. And so everything we do is also accessible via mobile. In addition, uh, Deepak, you talked about CRM as an example. We strongly believe that EdCast and our insights and our knowledge cloud should be distributed where employees live. So if it's a salesperson and they live in Salesforce, there should be insights and targeted learning distributed through their Salesforce uh, usage. And we've provided that as well as with a number of other applications. But the one we want to talk most about is ServiceNow. And with ServiceNow, what we love is the fact that we were able to develop our app in the ServiceNow marketplace. It's available today so that ServiceNow customers can actually download it and get fully integrated insights and learning where they live, which is in ServiceNow. So we augment what Deepak has done, and we will walk through a few examples. Uh, we talked about Julie, but we actually have three examples of different personas. Julie is number one. Julie, John, and Mary all work for a company, in this case, Acme Corporation. This is a Fortune 500 company that uses both ServiceNow and EdCast. We have many Fortune 500 customers in common with ServiceNow, which is why we're excited about this alliance and partnership. In this case, we're going to start with Julie. We know that Julie needs to be onboarded. We're going to walk through an example. And with that, I'm going to hand things over to Michael, who will uh, discuss the challenges that Julie faces in being onboarded and how EdCast works with ServiceNow to meet those challenges. Thank you, Phil. So uh, we're going to jump right into the demo. Um, Julie. The destination for Julie is to learn about onboarding various challenges is ServiceNow um, HR portal. Our integration, AppCast integration with um, ServiceNow allows Julie to browse information on onboarding channels that have been set up by or, or your organization inside of AppCast directly in ServiceNow. So we're looking here at the pathway which we're going to go over uh, we're looking at various articles about benefits, about human resources, um, onboarding article um, for the corporation, and so on. So the easy way for Julie is to learn more uh, and, and get onboarded into the organization uh, by looking at this channel. She can click on this pathway about Acme Corporation, uh, which takes Julie to the Acme Corporation's um, uh, instance of AppCast, and she can look at the pathway. Um, um, there, there are benefits, there are human resources, um, and all of the things that Julie does inside of AppCast being tracked in terms of her learning. So while we don't think about onboarding as a necessary learning, it is a learning. You, you, you gauge in something. And most interesting thing is that uh, once it, Something is, once something is completed in AppCast, um, she's granted a, um, a credential here. Uh, somehow it's not popping up. So, so uh, we grant her a badge, uh, and, and that badge can be posted to an internal HR portal as, and you know, Julie have uh, get, uh, received the onboarded um, badge. Um, so. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make that seamless transition, seamless integration with uh, ServiceNow and AppCast. And any of the customer of ServiceNow and AppCast can simply 
implement this application with a couple of clicks and bring all the relevant content on various topics directly into the ServiceNow HR portal. Um, that's the first case of onboarding. Back to you, Phil. Great. Thanks, Michael. So you can see now Julie has not only been onboarded, but she's been she's gained and benefited from learning and training and is on a path toward upskilling, uh, which we're excited about. Let's talk about another use case. Uh, we, what we're seeing, it's 2019, and we're seeing that change is happening faster than ever. So often uh, at EdCast, we deal with companies and customers that have a need to implement uh, new learning, knowledge, and insight requirements for their employees. For example, uh, a company might say, uh, this year security is a much higher priority than it was even last year, and that's important to us. Or sexual harassment training, or diversity in hiring and promotion practices. Or if we're a financial services company, we want people to be up to speed on the changes in SEC rulings that affect each and every employee of our company. Those are examples that might require that company to say, we not only want to recommend this, these learnings and this knowledge, we want to uh, require badging and certification for each and every employee or for each employee within a specific department in order to certify that they have gained that, those knowledge and insights that we want them to have. So with that, we have an example of John. John works for a company where the CEO has made security a high priority and has mandated that every person in a certain department uh, become certified in cybersecurity. Plus, John is highly motivated because he says this is an area of interest. So not only is he motivated to comply with the internal requirements, he's excited about being certified in cybersecurity. So with that, Michael will walk you through what he can do. Thank you, Phil. So we start again here with um, our channel on cybersecurity. John goes to ServiceNow HR portal, browse the channel channels available to him, and find the cybersecurity. Uh, and again, we present them with a hand curated or machine curated content on cybersecurity directly inside of ServiceNow. As Phil mentioned, uh, the goal for John is to get certified, and the first pathway that he's uh, looking at is certification IT. We know the Acme Corporation makes those nice red rockets. So, and let's say they're IT. So this is a pathway, um, a very comprehensive pathway that I actually went ahead and almost completed. We have, uh, it, it's hard to see here, but we have quizzes, we have articles, we have videos, we have podcasts, um, and more quizzes. And once all of this submitted, um, I can, I can, once individual pieces of content are completed, I can mark uh, the entire pathway complete, and this was grant me a, a badge, which a, a curator or administrator of our CAS system was able to set up, grant me a badge uh, in cybersecurity. Uh, so the question is, what do I do with that badge? Now, that badge is available to me um, um, here uh, on my profile, so anybody on AppCast can look at the badges that I have. More importantly, now that I received my badge in cybersecurity and IT, I can share that badge uh, in link with LinkedIn uh, with a simple click of a button, and that would be the experience that um, um, somebody would, would have when they completed a pathway on their instance and ready to share, uh, sharing this with the world. So this is all real, and, and um, if you go and if you, if you follow me on um, LinkedIn, um, you will see that I'm, I just posted my badge from uh, certification directly on LinkedIn. Again, we making this easy for users to see. And now the another not thing I want to cover here, this is, you know, John is not finding something that is interesting to him directly here. Remember, as Phil mentioned, we do integrate with the with the hundreds of sources depending on the organization. So 
not everything would probably was curated directly for you in cybersecurity channel. So, but you can access this again directly in the service now uh, by simply using search and without going away from uh, from service now. Look at this. We have a cybersecurity course uh, delivered to you in the search results. So, so you can explore courses. You, you can explore. This is a course from Udemy. So everything, all the source, all the integrations that have been done um, are available to you directly inside of a, a service now. And that's um, that's a use case for John. Back to you, Phil. Great. Thanks, Michael. I want to point out that there, in these two use cases, you, a company like Acme can provide badging and certification for both Julie, who was onboarded, and John, but the difference might be one is external, whereas John says, hey, I was certified for cybersecurity, so I can share it internally. He may also want to brag about it externally via LinkedIn because he feels like it ties in with an external aspect. Uh, there also can be internal badges and securities that you've completed an onboarding process or a hiring and promotion process that can be done internally as well. So we're excited about that. Now, one last use case. One of the things we see as a challenge in learning and knowledge management is how do employees learn what they don't know and what they don't know how to do? So that is a significant challenge. Deepak talked about moments that matter. He used some examples. For example, a leave of absence or a payroll change or a laptop upgrade. Now, some of those things might be easy and readily apparent, but other things that employees ask are not always as easy. They're not always as straightforward and they can be complicated for the employee to navigate. What EdCast has done is offers a path and a way for someone like Mary, who let's say wants to do something like, let's pick an example, transfer one of her employees from one cost center to another. Maybe that's the first time she's ever done that. Maybe that's the first time anyone in her peer network at her company has ever done that. So the question is, what can EdCast do to help Mary complete this task? With that, I'll have Michael walk through the answer. Thank you, Phil. Okay, so we have, uh, we kept uh, best for the last. Um, so Mary uh, goes to HR portal, goes to ServiceNow as she always does, and she would uh, ask a question. Um, and, you know, her need is to change a call center. And here's some magic here for you. Uh, so she would go uh, and type change call center. And we've prepared, uh, the, the, there is a little icon here you can see. Uh, we call it um, uh, Coach Eddie. Um, it's kind of, it, the Coach Eddie is uh, context aware. So Coach Eddie understood what the search is, what the search query is, and it augmented the result of ServiceNow with a pre-recorded created guide. And this guide uh, goes directly into the application where the cost center needs to change. In our case, it's a workday because, you know, we have a customer of ServiceNow, Workday, and AppCast. And all she have to do is to uh, click um, click play and um, this is the guide click on my team management click on transfer promote or change cost center select new cost center so that's it in about 10 seconds, Mary just learned how to change call center without going into details of finding and finding the content, uh, going through the manual, finding where she needs to go. Right there, the, the coach Eddie guided her, almost automated her work in, in how to change the call center um, for her employee. Um, and that is coach Eddie right here.
uh, on the right side. There are a number of guides that it, it contextually where it understands what where the uh, where the user is in, on the platform, what are they doing on the platform, and if if it can help, it provides help automatically. And that is uh, Coach Eddie integration. Back to you, Phil. Yeah, that's great. Uh, in fact, what we're going to do is uh, pretty soon we will invite questions from the audience. If you do have questions, you can just type them in this chat area of your WebEx in the lower right-hand corner. But just to follow up on what Michael presented, uh, with Mary, the fact that an employee can bring up a complicated question that's not easy to get answered, that, uh, that can be answered in a very automated, efficient way, ties in with a theme that Deepak mentioned, which is uh, every day and every hour that goes by that an employee is not productive or is frustrated by not being able to get a question answered is a day and hour of lost productivity. And, and you cited the $700 per day, and you even mentioned the 20% turnover rate. Uh, these are overarching goals that we are trying to address, whether it's with my guide, whether it's with Coach Eddie, whether it's with the examples we showed you with Julie or John, in addition to Mary, is making this easy. And you can see the little uh, phrase bubble, wow, that was easy. That's our goal. So we, in our work with ServiceNow, uh, we are augmenting and enhancing and complementing what they're already doing by trying to make things as easy and productive as possible. And what we've seen is that in the examples with ServiceNow and EdCast is what we are doing to digitize, simplify, and automate key workflows leading to those happier and more productive employees. Uh, and I know, Deepak, you talked about if we can reduce the time to productivity, you mentioned the 25% number, that's a goal of ours, but also to maintain productivity over the lifetime of an employee is an additional goal as well. So these are the examples uh, we felt would help illustrate how EdCast works uh, closely with ServiceNow. I think we are going to open things up for questions. Uh, and with that, uh, Deepak, why don't uh, you get ready, we'll get ready, and we'll take some questions for the audience. Um, how does that sound, Deepak? Sounds great. Love the demo. Fantastic. Uh, so with that, let's just start things off. I'm going to read a few questions and we'll direct them to uh, Deepak and or Michael and myself as needed. Uh, first, uh, Deepak, here's a question. Uh, what types of skills are you seeing that your customers are focusing on the most to helping uh, deliver great digital employee experiences? What are the types of skills that your partners are trying to develop the most? Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a great question. And you know, one of the things that always excites me is uh, every time there is a uh, transformative, game-changing shift in the way things are, um, are, are done, uh, in any industry, it, it really creates an ecosystem of, um, uh, you know, just additional jobs, careers, skills, and people are able to take on uh, so much more and, and do uh, higher value work, if you will, which is extremely fulfilling for uh, people in an organization. So I, I would say the big areas where I see um, customers, uh, their internal teams, as well as our um, system integration partners that are implementing our solutions build um, capability in. Uh, one would be just design thinking and how do you put yourself in the shoes of the employee and figure out what is it that their experience needs to look like. Um, and think about, you know, just like we develop software, we are product managers, uh, we've got designers, we put together these digital experiences for uh, customers to consume. Now customers have to do the same. They have to take our platforms and, and think and act like product managers internally in this new digital services era. Um, and so, you know, we find them either 
um, doing this in-house or, uh, or or getting skills from from the outside, but they'll typically have uh, design skills, they'll have research skills, uh, they'll have folks that are great at persona building, uh, you know, kind of looking at the employee population and figuring out all the different types of personas. Uh, there are folks that, that do journey mapping, right? So what does a, a leave of absence look like and what happens during different points in the journey? Uh, so you start to build these internal capabilities that in the past used to be one-off projects. You know, once in a while you may go out and, and fetch uh, a, uh, a third-party agency to come and do some of this work, but uh, I really see this as being one big shift. So that that's one. Uh, the other one really is a, is a softer skill um, that that folks are trying to develop, and that's around uh, better collaboration and uh, um, change management, if you will, across the organization. So if you think about all of these um, cross-departmental workflows, it's just going to require more work for everyone to reach across the aisle, work with the uh, the other departments in the um, uh, in the context of employee experience. And so just having a, a sense for how uh, to collaborate with other departments and break down those silos is something that organizations are, are really valuing. Um, and the last thing I would say is, is around the analytics. And this is, this is not new. This has really been around as a team for a long, long time. But um, I, I would say the focus is shifting from what traditionally used to be um, productivity analytics and talent analytics to what I would call experience analytics. And so what that means is trying to figure out where is the experience broken, how can we uh, fix the experience, how can we make it more optimized so the lens is different from uh, what used to be in the past, but nevertheless the core competency skill set um, that folks are trying to build is definitely around being very data-driven and analytical. So those would be kind of the, the top three that come to mind right now. That's great, Deepak. Thank you. And uh, we have another question uh, for both, uh, but we'll start with Michael. Uh, one person referenced Josh Burson and his discussion of learning in the flow of work and said, can you talk about the examples you showed in the context of learning in the flow of work? How does that relate? Uh, thank you, Phil. So, very good question. Um, the, the context that we show today is really to um, augment the knowledge, to augment and help a person to achieve the goal. While achieving that goal, you really end up learning something new. So in the case uh, with our ServiceNow integration, we present um, a, a user with uh, all the learning objects that are available to you, and anything in AppCast is a learning object. While you're getting the uh, your knowledge augmented while you're learning something new, how to change call, uh, uh, call center, how to, uh, you know, wh what I need to do in onboarding, all of them are really learnings. We're making those easy with various integrations and various platforms. Um, we think about um, everything, every augmentation of knowledge within the workplace is really learning. So we, uh, we as, as, as Phil mentioned, we have integrations with uh, uh, Office 365. We have integration with Salesforce, uh, Microsoft Teams, um, a, a Facebook Workplace, and more importantly, ServiceNow. For each one of those, we think about various use cases because people are using different tools uh, in different ways. Salespeople using uh, Salesforce most of the day, we want to make sure that we deliver relevant content for whatever their job is. And, you know, I'm not familiar with that as being a technical guy. But in case of ServiceNow, we, we thought and I thought uh, long and hard of how do we ensure that the value we deliver in ServiceNow, helping ServiceNow while enhancing the learning, while tracking the, as every uh, learning object inside of the system and making the person go towards their goal of learning. So, so we think about uh, learning flow work really holistically. We're taking each piece uh, and think about those pieces in a different ways. We think about how do we provide a value to a user of in the tool that they working because we want to make sure we believe in that person learning at, a, at all times and uh, we're delivering that learning uh, in their applications. 
That's great. Uh, and Deepak, did you want to maybe add to that? Uh, uh, do, you have, do you have a few comments you wanted to add? Sure. Yeah, and I'll you know I agree with uh, everything that Michael said. I, I think if you expand the definition of the term learning and the definition of the term work, right? Uh, work is not just the 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 tools you do you use to do your work. Uh, it is everything that you use at work. And a lot of times, uh, you know, service now we're not necessarily where employees spend their time doing their work, but we are we are the platform that helps them get back to their work. And so we are definitely a big piece of the tools and technology landscape that employees use from time to time when they need uh, to get something fixed, they want to request something, um, something is broken, they uh, they need help, guidance, right? And so it's part of that uh, broader ecosystem. And so their flow of work gets disrupted and we are trying to minimize that disruption. And now if you think about that broader notion of work um, and then you take learning, well, what does that learning mean? It's really, it's learning about how you go about minimizing that disruption as an employee. What are the things that I can do proactively to um, to uh, get back to full productivity? And so that's how you know, we look at this um, uh, integration, uh, integrated solution between EdCast and ServiceNow. That's great. Thanks, Deepak. Uh, and we have one more for you, Deepak, uh, from an audience member who said, with SaaS products like Oracle HCM or Workday, uh, is there a, what is the great business case for companies to also go with ServiceNow uh, as a layer for the employee self-service aspect? Are there some examples or case studies showing the benefits of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, you know, I'll start with uh, saying, you know, at, at ServiceNow, we've got you know, hundreds of customers that are using us for uh, for employee experience and, and HR service delivery in, in particular. Um, and this is out of the thousands of customers that actually have us uh, for just managing their, their IT side of the business, the IT service management side, right? So um, by definition, all of our customers have a core HR system and clearly they see value in uh, needing a platform to help manage the way services are delivered and uh, the way that employee experience shows up for these employees in conjunction, complementary to these HCM solutions. Uh, we're not a replacement for an HCM solution. I actually used to work at Oracle uh, in my past life before I came to, uh, to ServiceNow. One of the things we've done very deliberately is to stay complementary to everything that um, core HR and, and talent management systems do. Um, and very often, employees will start their journey or start the process within ServiceNow, but eventually they might end up in some other system to complete the transaction. So classic use case there tends to be, um, you know, let's take a use case, right? Hey, I got, I, got, uh, I got married. Okay, now what? The employee doesn't know what the next steps might be. You know, there may be impact to the way uh, they want to set up their uh, paycheck deductions. There may be impact to the way they want to uh, redo their, uh, their tax withholding. There may be impact to, you know, maybe they want to change their name. Maybe they're moving. Uh, there's just a, a number of things that this employee now has to worry about and they're not even sure where to start, how to go about it. And the first thought that's not coming to their mind is, well, now I'm going to go to the core HR system and go to a, a screen uh, or a, a navigation item that says, uh, change my name. Right? That, that's not how they think. They're, they're just trying to figure out uh, where do they go from here, what the policies are, what is the process, who, who needs to approve what, how long is this thing going to take. And you, you take that and you can actually use that same template for pretty much any life event that you might go through. Having a baby, you're a manager and you want to promote someone. Uh, your instinct is not, I'm going to go into a system and submit a transaction. Your instinct is, I have no idea what to do. This doesn't happen every day and I need help. And so that's where ServiceNow comes in and you know, many of our customers that are implementing are, uh, as they're moving to the cloud, are implementing, you know, Workday plus ServiceNow, Oracle plus ServiceNow, SAP SuccessFactors plus ServiceNow, uh, Ultimate plus ServiceNow, and we see this um, over and over again, and, and really it is the power of bringing together what we do uh, with the best of what these other platforms do, and we provide the, uh, the, the, the guidance, the help, the information, 
that they need in order to uh, be guided through that uh, through that whole process. And the the reason it becomes more complicated is in many organizations, it's not just one HR system. There may be multiple systems within HR. There may be a separate system for core HR versus performance reviews versus recruiting versus benefits versus payroll. And a lot of times, whatever they're going through touches many of them. So you get that problem, and then when you look at these bigger events like onboarding, offboarding, transfers, you throw in multiple departments as well outside of HR, and this problem quickly becomes very hard for employees to uh, to deal with. And so that's how we 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 uh, create that business case. It's really around employee experience, employee engagement, employee productivity. But then there's also a huge benefit to the departments like HR that are not getting inundated with questions like hey, how do I change the cost center, right? And we make it easy and working collaboratively with solutions like EdCast, we can uh, we can actually guide them. It goes back to the Google Maps example that I gave. And think of us as the Google Maps. That's very different from where you're driving, which is the streets and the highways and the freeways. So we're not the highways and the freeways. That's where you, you drive. That's your core HR, your, your different systems that you might already have. And it is part of the employee experience, uh, but we, we are the guide um, that that takes you through this without friction uh, and without confusion. So hopefully that helps. That's great, Deepak. Thank you. And what we're going to do is have one last quick question, uh, 45 seconds apiece. Uh, Deepak, starting with you, and then Michael, and then we'll wrap things up. Uh, Deepak, what is the typical ramp up and rollout process for new customers that are coming on board with ServiceNow? Maybe just highlight how long it takes and, and what you do to make that an easy process. Sure, yeah, so um, what we find is customers typically anchor around some sort of a, a shared services transformation and they are undergoing uh, some sort of a broader change. Sometimes it's in the context of a migration to the cloud with their core HR and they add on their shared services organization transformation with that. But when that happens, typically we'll, we'll go in, we'll uh, get them implemented with our shared services offering with uh, case and knowledge management, uh, which has a rollout time of roughly four to six months. Uh, most of it is just part of the transformation itself and figuring out what the processes are. It's less about the technology, which um, doesn't take that long. Uh, and then over time, they will add uh, elements of different moments that matter and start to create different experiences as they do employee journey. So our belief is get to value quickly uh, and fast within the first six to nine months and then keep um, building on top of that foundation in an agile manner. That's great. And Michael, when folks are signing on with EdCast, what's that process like? Uh, we'll continuously work on streamlining our process. It can take from days to weeks. Uh, we 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 making sure that we want to roll out the product as early as possible and get learnings as early as possible and then adjust the platform to the needs of a customer. Uh, when it comes to the integration pieces, those integration pieces are available in the stores and it really takes an administrator of service now to couple of click of button to get that integration that I showed today up and running. That's great. Uh, that wraps up our questions. If anyone has any other questions that we didn't get to, they can always email us, uh, marketing at edcast.com, and I can funnel that to Deepak as well. Uh, and with that, I want to first thank Deepak and Michael uh, for joining our webinar. Uh, if anyone would like to follow up, they know how to reach us. Also, we will make this recording available to the folks that are registered. Uh, in addition, for those of you who have more questions, we will be at the ServiceNow Knowledge 2019 conference, which is coming up in just a couple weeks. Deepak, I know you'll be there uh, probably in every uh, corner of that particular conference. I'm sure you're excited about that. Yep, super excited about it. It's going to be a huge conference with uh, over 20,000 uh, attendees, and um, you know we'll, we'll have uh, a good share of uh, HR and, and IT folks show for our employee workflows uh, track as well. Uh, so we expect a great turnout. Absolutely. So we're excited about that. Uh, we will see you there, and Deepak, uh, we will see you and the other 20,000 attendees in Las Vegas. Again, if anyone has any follow-up questions, 
marketing at edcast.com. I want to thank you very much, Deepak and Michael, for participating, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everyone.